Kenshi is unforgiving, harsh, with foul creatures, dangerous people, and corrupt authorities. This is the capital of the United Cities. Maybe a place I could call home. Or that's what I thought. There's only one place you belong. The mines! Here, being poor and hungry was against the law. They took care of my wounds and left me behind bars, unconscious, for hours. I lost track of time. I needed food, gear, and a prosthetic arm. My end goal was to be able to buy my own house and make a name for myself. 500 cats for a single piece of bread. I needed money. With no skills in combat and malnourished, I thought about asking for some help. But there was no point. Money was everything in this world. If I wanted to survive and put food on my table, my safest bet was to mine some copper close to town and hope to not get assaulted by hostiles. I ran through the desert to a huge copper node and started mining. My skills were non-existent. I had a difficult road ahead. The only way to improve was to put in the work. Each strike echoed through the hot air. It was draining. But I kept pushing. Kenshi is a living, reacting world. Groups and factions roam around the place. I heard the clash of the swords. My heart raced. Slave hunters got in a fight with some bounty hunters. My combat abilities were not even close to theirs. So I observed every detail, watching their moves, studying. I would need to hone my combat skills. But in the meantime, I take what I can get. After the bounty hunters left, I approached the unconscious bodies of their enemies. The bloodshed was striking. I proceeded to load the remains. My inventory was limited. Without a backpack, I'd had to be wise on what to carry with me. I took some pants, head armor, a couple of weapons, and as much valuable stuff as I could carry. I was no longer empty-handed. I sold the copper, all the loot, and bought my first piece of bread with my own money. First objective was complete. Now to the next. I visited the robotics workshop to browse the different options. In Kenshi's brutal reality, losing limbs was a common occurrence. And that was a business opportunity for some. The skeleton doctor offered a wide variety of limbs to buy arms and legs of different materials and quality, each one with different perks and disadvantages. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford any of them. Yet. I ran through the sandstorm and up the hills to resume my work. But this time, I was well fed, with money in my pocket and clothes on my body. I swung my pickaxe from day to night, non-stop, peeking over my shoulder. The stars were astonishing that night. Next morning, I had almost finished filling up my inventory, when out of nowhere, a group of farmers were fighting for their lives against mon hunters. I watched from afar, waiting for the right opportunity to loot their remains. But there were so many, the farmers didn't stand the chance. I ran far away from there. It was not worth the risk. Back in the city, I visited the traveler's shop. The vendor had multiple backpacks on sale, but again, too expensive for the time being. 
I went to the other side of town, trying to avoid any trouble with the hostile factions, mined all day until night, and then returned to the bar. It was bustling with people. Took a seat and talked with some travelers. I didn't miss any opportunity to ask for help, but they always wanted money, which I couldn't spare. Not until getting my arm again. I was surrounded by people, but still alone as ever. After selling more copper, I stumbled upon one of the tables, with a few people hiding their faces beneath black robes. They were part of a faction called Shinobi Thieves. They were fences and smugglers, usually found in bars or residing inside thief watchtowers within the various cities. By joining the guild, I'd get myself allies to watch my back, hideouts to lay low, rest and recover, training equipment to hone my abilities and much more, all for the price of 10,000 cats. But I knew that one day I would join them. First, the priority was to buy myself a new arm. This would open up so many possibilities. After mining for hours on end, I was finally ready. From being naked in the middle of the desert, now with a pair of pants, a new arm, and a brighter future. But I was still alone. In these treacherous lands, that will get yourself killed, sooner or later. I learned that lesson the hard way. I use my bandages to heal. On my way to town, I was suddenly detained. Starvation was illegal in this territory. Only the wealthy were welcome. I was lucky enough that the samurai was in a good mood. He gave me something to eat. This awful place was full of corruption. I needed to get out of this pit, but I couldn't do anything in this state. I dragged myself to the bar, rented a bed, and slept through the night. I needed money to join the shinobi or to get myself a companion at least. Mining with my robotic arm skyrocketed my efficiency through the roof, but it wasn't enough. Every person I talked to asked for more cats than I had with me. That's when it hit me. I was on the lookout for any opportunities that could get me the money that I needed. Those awful giant insect creatures, when killed, they dropped their claws, which could be sold for a modest amount. Thing is, there were a lot of them. The samurai in charge of the protection of the town were killing them left and right, leaving their corpses ready for the taking. Just like that, I had more money than ever before. Unfortunately, war gets around town fast. On my way out, the guards stopped me for a contraband check, conveniently finding some items on me and asking me for money for a crime that I didn't commit. And I had enough.
with a bounty on my head. I was no longer welcome in the United Cities. Well, I never was. It was time to leave this place behind. As the scorching sun beat down upon my body, I sprinted through the great desert. Branded as an outlaw, I was now seen as a threat to the Empire. I dared to challenge their oppressive rule, and now I was paying the price. I pushed my body to its limits, guided by the smell of freedom. Miles of sand stretched endlessly before me, a blank canvas where I could really find my destiny. The minutes turned into hours, trees appearing on the horizon, as well as vicious beasts. My heart was pounding against my chest as I ran for my life. With each step that I took, I was getting better. My legs were growing stronger with every stride. It became my way of breaking free from my past. I learned to breathe better. The more I ran, the more I improved. The grains of sand changed into pebbles and rocks. I wasn't aware of where I was heading. At one point, I arrived at the black desert, surrounded by poisonous clouds. Acid started falling from the sky, burning every inch of my skin. I ran far away from there as quickly as possible. If it wasn't the man hunters, the giant creatures, corrupt samurai, or acid rain, Kenshi would find a way to beat you up. I needed to be smart, fast, take advantage of every opportunity, as small as it was, and keep moving. After leaving the schemers behind, finally, I found civilization. I was safe. Or so I thought. close. I almost made it. My body laid on the ground, surrounded by the canyon walls. Nobody was around. Well, nobody that actually cared. And so, my life was slowly fading away, without being able to do nothing more than wait until my end. People didn't even bother looking at me. Nobody. No one. Except for him. That mysterious samurai single-handedly saved my life. He didn't have to. He didn't need to. He just did it. Why? Out there, there were people who cared. I lay there for hours. Cities weren't the only ones that wanted me dead. 
The holy nation was a theocratic human state. Their religion oppressed anyone who didn't agree with their beliefs. They hated technology and science. They wanted me dead just because of my prosthetic arm. The only place where I could settle down and stop running was the border zone and no man's land. A region previously under holy nation control, now mostly ruins, travelers and starving bandits. I kept running night and day, crossing the rocky valleys, watching the sunrise, moving beneath the tall and lush trees. Up in the mountain, I stumbled upon a tiny settlement, a small, deserted outpost, now just wreckage. Not a single soul was there. Between the rubble and debris, valuable items were forgotten, building materials, iron plates, fuel, and swords. I equipped a katana, and took as much things as I could carry. I needed to get a backpack or even someone else to help me with all of this. Maybe soon I'd be able to build a place to call home. The border zone had a unique beauty. Desolate. Silent. Peaceful, in a way. Not too far from the settlement, I found the Waypoint Station. A tiny piece of land, guarded just by two guards behind some sort of makeshift ballistas. The station had only a bar and a single shop. I sold some of the weapons to the trader and made my way into the cantina. There was people from all over. Warriors, mercenaries, outlaws and adventurers. There, in the rooftop, I met Silvershade, an ex-hiver, feeling lonely. He had to do things he wasn't proud of, just to get by. He was a jack of all trades, spent time as a bandit, pickpocket, mercenary, you name it. On top of that, he had a debt to pay. I paid his debt. From that point on, we walked the same path and shared the same fate. I gave him a katana, bought a couple of backpacks, some food, and then spent the night resting, healing my wounds. I was no longer walking alone. For the first time, I had someone to watch my back. We stopped at the destroyed settlement and grabbed every single valuable item, filled both of our backpacks and inventories to the top. We ran beneath the huge vegetation, the trees, rocks, between tall valleys, even alongside a river. We had arrived at another settlement, the hub. It had seen better days. Most of it was destroyed, but it was quite the view. Working in tandem, we mined some more copper near town. Under the moonlight as well as the sunlight, we were connected and sync. The idea of getting a house was closer to reality, but it had to be the right place. And this wasn't it. There were almost no shops mostly wreckage and ruins. We kept exploring, avoiding the bandits, contemplating more alien-looking landscapes, until we arrived at the Squeen. This was it. It had everything. Shinobi tower, armor shop, weapon shop, traveler shop, not one, but two bars. It was a living town, away from the oppressive United Cities and the insane holy nation. This was going to be our home. With hard work, we finally saved enough money to buy our own property. We used the building materials to repair it from the ground up and watched proudly at the result. Contemplated. Something from nothing. No longer running away, we had a place in this world. And this was just the beginning. But. What if you were trapped, surrounded by the undead, bleeding, sick, and drunk? In this video, I try to survive the hardest start in Project Zomboid. Thank you to everyone who joins as a member and donates to the channel. Hope to see you around.